So I know that I want to convert this content into tabular data, uh, like the example over here. And what I want to do before I get too deep into this project is I want to create a static example, static HTML example of that um, table data, and then apply this graphing library to it so I make sure that, you know, my end goal, which is ultimately just to create this table, is going to be correct uh, in the way that it gets rendered by the graph. So um, first order of business is to then find the, uh, the actual JavaScript library that they're referencing in this article. Now, uh, I have to say that digging through here, this article, they don't provide you a link at all. But if you go to GitHub and you uh, search within their filament group, you should find their page. And it's just simply github.com forward slash filament group. And um, they have a bunch of stuff over here. But the one we're looking for is, let's find it. It's visualized. So we got to go down a little bit. jQuery. visualize here it is so you click on here and now you should get to their github page with all the good stuff and essentially we want it all so let's click right there on the zip button and we're going to download a zip version of this save it to the desktop and let's take a peek at what we have in here once I unzip this file I'm going to have all of the assets I need for this project. So let's close some of these windows and let's get right to the meat and potatoes of this project. So here we go. We have within these, um, within this folder, this visualization folder, you got a bunch of different files, but we're looking for uh, just the regular index.html and actually before I mess something up I'm going to make a copy of index and um, I'm going to name it index.back just that way I know I'm going to be editing this index file over here so in case I go too far and mess something up I kind of have a backup of it so let's see what we're looking at here okay so we're looking at what we saw online except now we have all the files localized so we could kind of poke around a little bit better and let me look at um, this index now in Dreamweaver uh, nope okay so here we go now looking through this we have I see that this enhanced.js is being added this is another uh, something unique to the filament group. It's a bootstrapping thing. Um, basically, it's a progressive enhancement uh, JavaScript they created, kind of beyond the scope of what we'll be doing. Um, but when I look at this other stuff over here, I guess they run a compatibility test, see what your browser could do, and then here they're just loading some other scripts. Um, into the file. So all of this is just fine. Um, interestingly enough, they're also loading two CSS files. So we'll see um, what that does. But, but here's actually what we're looking at. This table represents what we see here. So obviously, if we go in here and we go food, and instead of food, we go rocks. And I save this, what we should see is instead of food over here saying food, it'll now say rocks. Okay, I think you guys get it. And we have what? Um, we have one, two, three. We have four different people. I mean, if we kind of look at this, it seems like this is just perfect for our graph because what we're going to do with our things is have these URLs down at the bottom over there um, but we're not going to need all the rest of these guys so I wonder if we could simply just delete these and let's see what happens if we delete some of these values over here okay I like that so now we just have rocks over here and now these things are going to be rendered just this way okay you know we kind of messed up our other graphs as a result 
but that's all we really need I mean we just need over here it's going to be each individual URL that we're referring to and over here we're just going to say shares because that's what that column indicates and we could get rid of all these other values over here too so um, we have row for Mary why don't we take away all of these so at least this way it's not exactly the data I'm looking for but we at least see the static example of what we need to get to and let's see once I refresh it okay there we go I have um, some of these other charts that don't work anymore but that's uh, they wouldn't make sense for the kind of data we're trying to compare anyway the pie chart works but that percentages for what we're doing doesn't matter because it's not out of a hole it's just um, just raw numbers over here and let me just change some of this instead of going to 190 has such a huge difference let's see once I change that value look at how this whole chart changes accordingly right so 40 is the biggest we could change it to 4 19 is going to be the biggest now I wonder if we change it to thousands which is sort of like what we're gonna have there what it's gonna look like just out of curiosity yeah well there you go anyway um, at least at this point what we've derived is that this is going to be what our table is sort of going to look like okay obviously these values are going to be a bit different in here and I'm going to change the caption to something more appropriate and uh, these values inside over here are going to be dynamic but this is a good starting point um, for where we need to go with our um, with our script over here